Hi, hello everyone. Um, Dr. Prasad Kothila to my YouTube channel, uh, My Intuition 4865, continuation of uh, the class series of Biology for Engineers 21BE45. Okay, so module 4 part 2. So I have uh, completed uh, four, uh, 3 modules completely, 4th module half uh, till 4.4.4.4 .4 that uh, mentioned here, 4.4. Till then I completed this is 4.5. Okay, so till 4.4 part 1 now, the notes, uh, PDF notes I am circulating to all uh, through my WhatsApp number, using my WhatsApp number 797-505-4865. Okay, each module uh, around 50 to uh, 30 to uh, 35 pages. I am uh, charging 10 rupees. Okay, so till now uh, 4 set of notes I am giving to those who are paying to me uh, how to do the payment uh, that when you put a message on my whatsapp number 797-505-48 i will inform uh, how to do the payment don't pay to this number it will go to my official uh, official account it will be difficult for me to use it okay so i will give my personal number to that uh, if it will uh, the amount will go i immediately will send the pdf note okay those who are paying rupees 40 full rupees 40 all this Four module, fifth module, as well as I will uh, do one more uh, note, which is uh, the course outcome based, uh, indicating the revised Bloom taxonomy level, questions and the scheme, okay, the possible questions and mark distribution, we call it as a simple scheme, not the detailed scheme, how the marks can be distributed, that separate note also will be given, so you will be getting uh, five modules full notes plus one question answer, question bank will be getting for 40 rupees so those who pay the for them only i'll be giving the pdf it is my ebook concept okay okay so this is the part two of module four plant birds and velcro that is nature uh, bio inspired materials and mechanisms okay uh, uh, plant birds okay uh, this is the uh, particular image represents the globular flower head of a bulldog plant Okay, so bulldog plant you might have seen the English word bulldog, but what you don't, you know may, may be knowing it's a local uh, what you use the word for this particular plant. This is there everywhere. Okay, so this one it will uh, whenever we walk through that uh, it will uh, stick to our uh, clothes or uh, our uh, skin, even our uh, 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 shoes. Everywhere wherever possible it will uh, stick because it has got that small hook. Okay, this is nature nature's uh, method so that it will stick to our uh, when we pass through or we walk it will reach to a distant distance and there it may fall and it will start growing there. Okay, so that is nature's uh, uh, magic uh, on this. Okay, the same thing uh, uh, is used uh, to prepare the uh, velcro. The same concept uh, was used by Swiss engineer George D. Mistral in 1941. When he saw that this type of particular flower uh, head, uh, it is uh, stick to his clothes as well as the dog's fur. Okay, so he examined and he found that uh, there are small hooks type uh, uh, material present on that uh, flower. These hooks. So he thought that that hooks and uh, our the cloth material uh, were uh, it it can be made as a loop. Okay, so. That concept made him to work on this uh, hook loop or the velcro. Okay, why the name velcro he came that also uh, explained. Uh, it's actually a combination of words velvet and crochet. Uh, it rep represents the fabric strips uh, you know, resembling the velvet and uh, hooked together like a uh, crochet. Okay, so he used that uh, to make this particular uh, uh, material which we call as a velcro material okay, velcro it is used as a as a replacement to the button system or other system because it is easy to apply easy to remove okay and it's a strong uh, bond also then uh, what are the materials which are used in velcro technology velcro technology it uses nylon nylon uh, hooks okay this is nylon hook Okay, and also it uses the, the polyester uh, loop, the loop side it is a polyester, the polyester and nylon it is used in the velcro. The engineering applications of velcro technology, 
it is used uh, it find uh, applications in clothing and footwear it find applications in uh, medical devices it find application in aerospace equipment uh, automotive industry packaging industry sports equipment okay you can go through that uh, it will tell where and all we are using it we already know we are aware of that we are aware of, we are using we will crop now shark skin and uh, friction reducing swimsuit uh, that is bio inspired by the shark okay shark uh, it moves very faster in the water ocean water than any other uh, fish so uh, scientists had the curiosity uh, when uh, they got uh, enough uh, equipments to study they studied the skin of the uh, shark and uh, they found that it has got a uh, this type of uh, structure on its uh, skin uh, which is called as a uh, denticles okay so if that denticles because of the denticle which this is this type of shape it is not there in other fishes therefore they studied about that and they found that uh, these denticles uh, which are the tiny bumps or ridges uh, they reduces the uh, friction uh, and make the uh, shark to move faster compared to other fishes it reduces the turbulence in water okay so these are the physics behind that uh, it reduces the turbulence in water turbulence is when uh, fluid like water or, or air becomes uh, chaotic uh, or unpredictable instead of uh, flowing smoothly it uh, swirls and form irregular patterns uh, which creates uh, some resistance and uh, uh, makes uh, it's harder to move through it also reduces the drag the particular shape it reduces the drag uh, when a shark swims through the water the water normally flows smoothly over its body however the denticles on the shark skin uh, disrupt this uh, smooth flow create a small disturbance in the water which helps to break up turbulence current and uh, slow the shark down by reducing the turbulence denticles may make the flow of water around the shark's body smoother this smoother flow reduces the resistance or drag uh, the shark experiences as it moves through the water allowing it to swim, swim more efficiently okay because of that particular uh, shape of that skin that micro shape okay a very small shape okay so 100 micrometer the distance the, the um, length uh, of this particular uh, area which is mentioned uh, with the electron microscope i think uh, it is 100 uh, micrometer so that much smaller uh, uh, shapes which reduces the drag okay the water go, goes smoothly on uh, on its uh, skin it will not create any uh, uh, friction so the same concept it is used to produce a frictionless swimsuits frictionless swimsuits it uses the same uh, type of denticles on the, on uh, on the swimsuits the dress material it is used for the swimmers uh, it causes so you saw that many uh, records were broken uh, uh, the swimming records were broken by using such type of suits again uh, it created some other issues related to that whether it should be used or not but still uh, whenever we need uh, for fast swimming we can use uh, that frictionless swimsuit what are the materials which is used to prepare this type of uh, uh, frictionless or uh, uh, yeah frictionless swimsuit they are polyurethane mainly used polyurethane material for uh, lycra and uh, spandex which is again a blend of uh, polyurethane uh, with uh, uh, nylon uh, polyester or cotton or it uses a uh, high tech fabrics uh, some um, fabric uh, which is the trademark or um, uh, which uh, the company uh, the manufacturers are not ready to uh, tell what exact material they are used okay so some high tech fabrics are also there examples like uh, the um, available uh, swimsuit in uh, different name varieties uh, speedo fast skin uh, arena power skin uh, carbon ultra tyr benzo uh, these are uh, the some of the uh, material uh, swimsuits which are available in the market uh, using the shark skin uh, technology uh, now kingfisher beacon bullet train how the bullet train the, the japan's bullet train mainly how they initiated uh, and what inspired them it is because of the kingfisher's beak only okay the kingfisher beak uh, it has the excellent example for nature's design for efficient diving and uh, fishing okay so the physics behind the kingfisher beak that it is 
streamlining okay the beak of kingfisher is long slender and sharply pointed helps reduce the drag or air resistance as the bird dives into the water it reduces the surface tension so it it crosses the surface tension okay a water molecule a water layer it it actually forms a, a skin type okay you know the water is smooth but something if you hit on the water surface we feel the force which is generated there okay a skin type layer is formed that is because of the surface tension due to the sharp peak of the king feature it will just simply penetrate okay it will not cause any surface tension uh, issues to the uh, kingfisher beak minimizing the splash okay when it enters the water if since it is a very sharp peak it will not cause any splashing of water it should not create any any much disturbance if it splashes then immediately the uh, aquatic organisms or the fishes will uh, get that uh, uh, shock wave immediately it will escape okay so to avoid that uh, this particular shape peak of that feature it even won't produce any splash simply to it to go inside and uh, catch the fish and come out okay so the same concept is used by the japan paper the shinkansen bullet train uh, because the train it has to go at very fast speed very fast speed means to penetrate in the air okay so that friction it has to avoid if it is passes through a tunnel and it comes out from the tunnel uh, it may create a large uh, sound effect to avoid all those things the skin feature uh, peak concept it is used what a good shape uh, good shape hmm. okay so the technological importance uh, technological importance of uh, this uh, biomimicry that it uh, creates uh, aerodynamic design aerodynamic is anything which uh, related to the movement uh, through air through water or any fluid uh, that uh, is called as aerodynamics it reduces the pressure wave reduction pressure wave reduction means when it passes through a tunnel and when it uh, comes out uh, the pressure wave which is produced it will be uh, minimized or uh, we can avoid that uh, that sudden pressure burst out uh, it creates that uh, noise a heavy noise which which will be just like blasting or noise it can be avoided by using that same concept last topic of this 4.8 what is 4.5 started and 4.8 last topic of this particular chapter or unit module of video human blood substitutes a substitute for our blood not a replacement a complete substitute only okay so the basic requirement for such substitute uh, that it should be having effective oxygen support uh, the substitute uh, of blood uh, it should have effective oxygen transport because our blood is a very good transport of oxygen so uh, the substitute also should have the same effective oxygen transport uh, it should be safety and compatibility it should be safe and it should be compatible compatible means it will not should not create any harm to our body it should be bio compatible actually the word used is bio compatible uh, it has to be bio compatible it should not irritate our uh, system our body system otherwise our body system will resist and it will uh, it will uh, kill it will uh, destroy that okay so it should be uh, compatible storage and transport uh, uh, it should be uh, safe uh, uh, to storage for a long uh, period of time and uh, transport uh, to carry from one place to other place uh, this we should have that potential cost effectiveness and scalability whatever we prepare if it is too costly then nobody will purchase it therefore we have to make it a very uh, cost effective and scalability scalability means large production large scale production should be possible now what are the types of uh, human blood uh, substitute there are two types available now hemoglobin based oxygen carriers and perfluorocarbons okay so hemoglobin based oxygen carriers uh, they, they they are hemoglobin molecule which is the protein in red blood cell which carries oxygen to the body's tissue whereas the pfc they are purely synthetic purely synthetic material which uh, can be used as a uh, replacement to blood 
Okay, so we'll give some of the uh, examples. Hemoglobin-based oxygen carriers. Uh, they are uh, isolated. The red blood cells are uh, isolated. Uh, human blood cells. The hemoglobin is separated, uh, isolated and separated, and uh, it is um, uh, injected uh, with uh, other suspended uh, other solutions or suspension. It is injected, injected to the patient's bloodstream. What are the advantages of using uh, hemoglobin based blood carrier? We put it in the next page. Okay. Uh, advantages so, uh, increased oxygen carrying capacity. They have very good uh, oxygen carrying capacity. They have a universal compatibility. Uh, universal compatibility means it will, uh, it will not create any issue to any of the uh, person in uh, different countries or uh, in the universe. Uh, reduce the re uh, long shelf life, reduce the risk of infection, infection risk, availability in remote or challenging settings. Limitations are so there. Okay, so it has got uh, increased oxygen carrying capacity, but it has got a limited oxygen release. It carries, but it has to be released for the application requirement. It has got limited oxygen release. It has got short half life. Nitric oxide scavenging, uh, it uh, carries, it, it has got a tendency to scavenge nitric oxide, uh, which is important for uh, regulating blood vessel uh, uh, dilation and maintaining normal blood flow. Okay, so excessive nitric oxide scavenging by HBOs can lead to vasco uh, constriction and impaired blood flow to vital organs and potential causing adverse cardiovascular effect. Therefore, uh, it has got that nitric oxide scavenging issues. It has got uh, in, uh, toxicity, it has got uh, immunogenicity and adverse reactions. And there are some uh, challenges uh, to the regulatory bodies. It, it becomes uh, interfered with uh, the other diagnostic uh, test. So it becomes difficult for the personnel to do the analysis. Examples of HBOs. Uh, Hemoglobin based oxygen carriers example, hemophore, oxyglobin, hemospan, mp 4 oxx hemolink. These are some of the brand names uh, and uh, where and all it is uh, permitted to use, uh, where and all it is not uh, permitted. Many countries have not yet given the regulatory approval for the clinical usage of uh, HBOCs. Okay, so but still uh, the research is going on. They are not permitted, but still they have doubt whether it will create any harm to our body or not. Therefore, more research is required. More uh, uh, they have to pass clear or many uh, hurdles to finally get the uh, approval from FDA. Last topic that is for fluorocarbon. For fluorocarbon is purely synthetic, uh, not like uh, uh, hemoglobin is separated and uh, done. Is separately prepared uh, oxygen carrying it uh, as a uh, replacement to blood. Okay, it has got a high oxygen carrying capacity, improved oxygen solubility, stability, and long shelf life. Uh, no blood typing or uh, cross matching required. Uh, reduced risk of infection. Uh, compatibility with the diagnostic test. And it's a limitation again, uh, limited oxygen offloading means release is limited. Need for a specialized administration method, short half life, clearance and elimination, side effects and toxicity, regulatory considerations. Okay, so again, it also has got uh, some advantages as well as limitations. It's not that it becomes almost perfect one. Still, uh, again, we can say that still research is going on that many available PFCs are perfluoran. Per Oxycite, Oxycite PFC emulsion, Hemophore PFC are the some of the PFCs which are available. Okay, so this is HBBO2. Okay, so that's about uh, module uh, 4. Okay, hope uh, I couldn't explain in detail because everything is given. So no need to explain. Uh, so I was just showing the images and uh, telling. Okay, please be feel to contact me on my WhatsApp number uh, uh, 797 505 4865 for this study material. Thank you very much.